my wife and Elder Averitt saying, this is not your fight. This is not your fight. Don't go to jail and can't preach Sunday. But, so I just sit over there, but you know I be wanting to just, what? adamantbeliever.com forward slash love him with your life 12 all the way up to 12 amen thank God for this series it has blessed me amen in order to truly love the Lord with your life you have to live right look at somebody and say you have to live right Boy, Jalen Bond sent me a clip of a preacher, and he was preaching, and he said, thank God for his grace. He said, because I cuss, and I'm saved. And he named some other stuff he does. It don't mean we perfect. It means I can bless God with a limp. That I can bless God, even though there are areas in my life that are out of order. I love God and I cuss. I love God and I like trap music. There's something about God that will cover me in my broken. You know, when I got saved, I didn't want to cuss anymore. Amen. Like them first few years of, you know, you might stomp your toe and muscle memory will get. <laughs> That muscle memory, you know, you just, you, it's fresh. You still remember a lot of stuff. But after some time passed, man, you ought to be in control of your tongue. Don't clap if you ain't in control. <laughs> well, now who is that preacher? <laughs> what was that video you was talking about? <laughs> I think I'm going to listen to him. <laughs> but in order to truly love the Lord, you have to live right. So you ought to feel demonic when you cuss. Like after it comes out, you ought to be like, oh, I said I wasn't going to do that again. Because I know the Lord doesn't like that. You don't get used to that life. Well, he's going to forgive me anyway. Blah, 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 blah. First Peter 1 and 16, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Look at somebody and say, holiness is right. I don't care if you Baptist, Presbyterian, I don't care what it is. Holiness is right according to the word. This scripture did not discriminate with denominations. That's man's doing. We believe holiness is right. So we believe in living holy. Amen. Amen. You don't talk like Cat Williams if you say. You can't watch Cat Williams if you say. See, all the hand claps don't think. Now, wait a minute, Pastor. He's mighty funny. But if you got to sort through all them cuss words, at some point you ought to say, you know what? This is just too much cussing. <laughs> That's that old sugar fast clap. <laughs> yeah, some, some of y'all just jive. You just jive. Yeah, your video collection ought to change when you saved. You can't watch baby boy and be saved. That's going to bother you. It should. Baby boy. That, that should bother the unsaved. He was so jab. Oh, I, I know I'm preaching. Players Club, men, that can't be in your video collection. Oh, I guess I'll watch the Players Club. You ain't saved. Why do you want to watch it anyway? I know why. But still, you ought to be delivered by now. But I, I, you, some stuff you ought to not want to watch. Ladies. Let me think of one. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know. <laughs> Next bullet. <laughs> we cannot succumb. 
my wife out of control. We cannot succumb to fleshly sinful habits that we have struggled with for many years. You can't succumb to it and just say, well, it's just going to be this way. Not as a believer. Somebody, somebody is saved in here. Saved for real. Amen. Like every, listen, everyone has had their struggles. Everyone has had their backslidden state, whatever the case. There were times when things got so bad or something happened, you just backslid. Some of you was gone for a while. But you, but you came back to the fold. Amen. Because you're saved. Then you got to go find what it was that got you out so that you can close that door. Because if you don't close the door, guess what's going to happen? Amen. And quit all that. Oh, I'll never, Lord. I'll never. If you give me, I'll never. Don't say that to the Lord. Don't do that at all. Never say never. You don't have to. That's the thing. You don't have to. Why would you say never to an eternal being? He's eternal. Time's inside of him. So he knows everything. So why would you go to saying what you don't know whether or not you will do in front of the one that knows exactly what you're going to do? First Peter 1 and 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. The way you used to live in your ignorance. How many of you used to live ignorantly? Yeah, the way you used to live. Don't fashion yourselves that way. Not the former lust. What you used to lust after. Whether it was money, fame, people, bodies, whatever it was, you don't fashion yourself that way. Amen? So there's certain guidelines you have to put up to protect yourself. Amen? Everybody want to go see Magic Mike. The single women, you, hey, I can't go with the single women to see Magic Mike. Why are you going to see that? And I hate when they act like they don't know what I'm talking about. You can't see that. You can't do, why? Yeah. Leaving the music video channel on all day. Why are you watching music videos? Well, I'm waiting for a gospel one to pop up. <laughs> you gonna be waiting a long time. Then when one pop up, you're not gonna know it's gospel. It's gonna be just as worldly. made a series on Lifetime. Bishop T.D. Jakes did the series about the five deadly sins. One of them was called Lust and had nothing but sex scenes and nudity in it. The Bishop. Executive producer T.D. Jakes. Two original movies about the two deadliest sins. Envy. Y'all must be rolling in it. <laughs> Lust. Was there ever a time you wanted to experience another man? Two weekends only. <gasps> it's easy to invite the devil in, but it's hard to get him out. The Seven Deadly Sins story starts April 10th, only on Lifetime. Are you, why are you producing that? What's in your heart, guy? You don't illustrate the five deadly sins. You making folks commit three of them just by watching it. You don't lay traps in front of people. That's the sin of Balaam. That's the Nicolaitans. That's what the Bible said. I hate. God said the one thing he told he feed, he said, the, the church at Ephesus, he said, this is the one thing I do like about you. You hate the folks that lay traps in front of my people. He said for that, he said, I'm like that too. 
so I agree with you. You hate it like I hate it. Don't put traps in front of your brothers and sisters so they'll fall. Showing folks sin. You don't show sin. Oh, you can't get an amen on that. Thank you, baby. Somebody. Cause some of these grown folks will. It's in my DVR now. I'm just going to see if, if I watch it, if it's watched, if I should. I'm telling you now. Don't watch sin. You don't need to watch that. Somebody illustrating that and showing you all the stuff you came out of. You'll be right back in it. And what a preacher. Well, anyway. We, we know. Amen. Money. The Bible said it's, it's about money. As believers of the gospel, we must never. Look at somebody and say never. How long is never? We must never stop fighting against sin and the old man that once had us bound. Did the old man once have you bound? The way you used to be had you bound. That's why we came to church to get saved and stop being the old man or being bound by the old man. That's what, at least that's what we were supposed to be coming from. So we could never stop fighting. It's a constant fight. The minute you think you passed it, the devil will throw something else at you. So you don't gloat in it. Like you, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm better than that, you know. No. You just walk it. Let the walk speak for you. Amen. Yeah. First Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on what? Eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called. And hast professed a what? Good profession before many witnesses. You say you're saved, hold on to it. Look at somebody and say, hold on. hold on. Don't be on the job getting mad and cussing folk out and gossiping. And... Amen. You're not showing yourself as a Christian. So you're going to hurt some folks that want to come. Sometimes believers can struggle with doing the right thing. Oh, y'all don't? Okay. Y'all don't struggle doing the right thing? Oh, let somebody make you mad enough. There's a way you would like to handle that. And it's not perfecting holiness. There's a way, yes. That seemeth right unto man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Sometimes the ways of death come in my mind. For some folks. Amen. Hey, it, ain't the, it ain't the Holy Ghost talking, it's the Grim Reaper talking. <laughs> Amen. Brother, I see you dead. Oh, you better be glad I'm saved. Now, you can't be doing that either. That's, that's wrong, too. Feel good to say sometimes, but it's still wrong. Better be glad I'm saved. <laughs> then say it loud where they can hear you. You know it's on after that. Oh, really? Well, what would you do if you weren't saved? Let me show you. Let me, let me demonstrate. Since you asked. Now you asked. <laughs> but believers can struggle with doing the right thing. When you've had trauma in your background, when you grew up on the rough side, anybody grew up on the rough side of the mountain? Grew up on the rough side of the mountain, you grew up with issues, different things like that. You're trying to get those things worked out with the Lord, but sometimes it's a struggle to do the right thing. It really is. That's why you got to stay prayerful. That's why you got to keep reading the word. You got to stay before God. Because you can't trust yourself without God. Can I get an amen on that? You can't trust yourself without God. It's not always easy to make the right choice during times of temptation and trials. Amen? Hey, some of y'all, as soon as it's time to fill out the IRS papers. It's hard to make the right choice. The choice is right there. You can, all you gotta do is check it. Oh, it's hard to make the right choice. Brother, I can get you a return. You know them folks. 
I get you a return. You gonna pay it back anyway? You gonna pay it back or you gonna get audited. I had a friend, good friend. Hey doc, they can get you 20 grand guarantee. I said, you don't even know my situation. They don't have to know it. They don't have to know. They don't have to know. It's like, they don't have to know how many kids, they don't have to know nothing. You sign it and just give it to her and she'll fill out, fill it all out. This is a true story. Next year, <laughs> I was like, hey man, whatever happened with the girl that knew how to do her? Bro, I got audited. <laughs> and you couldn't find nothing, could you? I didn't know where my stuff was. <laughs> yeah, you put the magnifying glass on yourself. Yeah. You've been getting $1,000 every year and now you got 20. <laughs> it's like, what happened to him? <laughs> Things changed. We need to investigate. Yeah, but you struggle with making the right choice during times of temptations and trials. And that's tempting sometimes. Just to break a little law and get ahead. See, I, what is wrong with these people? You know you be tempted sometimes. I'm going to have to walk through the whole crowd now, Jay Bryant. I can't get a witness up here. And the lights won't let me see back here. Somebody, you know, it's just easy sometimes. Change a number, come up a little bit. Lie just a little bit. It wasn't really a lie. Yeah, your car already had a dent in it. And somebody thought they put it there and put a little note on your car. That happened to me, that's why I'm bringing it up. Put a note on your car and said, I backed in your car and I saw that big dent. So uh, here's my number and you can file it with my insurance. That happened with me. Had a dent right in there before they hit the car. And I was faced with a choice. I, of course, I chose, not of course, but I chose to do the right thing. I don't want to say of course like I'm above anybody, but I chose to, no, that dent was already there. Amen. Amen. Two weeks later, took my car to get it washed over at the dealership. Friend of mine, service manager, he came out. He said, man, what happened right here? I said, oh, man, I had a dent, man. I, something happened. I forgot. He, I don't even remember what happened. He said, oh, man, I'm going to take care of that, dude. He washed the car and had them fix the dent and didn't charge me a penny. <laughs> See? But if I had lied and cheated, the whole car would have got totaled somewhere with me in it. I'd have been preaching maimed in a cast, body cast, preaching. Over a dent. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. You just don't. But you gotta make the right choice and God is watching. He's watching the devil tempt you to see what you're going to do. And God is expecting, after all these years of hearing the word, some progress. He's expecting some progress. Can't be making the same old stupid mistakes. But it's not always easy to make the right choice during times of temptation and trials. Galatians 5 and 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. So there's a constant battle between the spirit and the flesh. Your spirit want to do the right thing, but your flesh doesn't. And depending on how you have trained your flesh, that's going to decide which one is going to win. Which one have you been investing in? If you've been watching the Players Club and Magic Mike, the flesh is going to win. Soon as he texts, hey, I'm in town. Ooh. I, I said, don't text me no more. Well, too late. <laughs> Watch the wrong video. Now you don't have no power over that temptation. Can I just be real in here? Yeah. Or listening to the wrong music. We don't even go there. We don't want to go there. 
Amen. Some of y'all still trying to ride the bench on the truth behind the hip hop message. Yeah. I don't know why you got the spirit of lust on you. Amen. You better leave that secular music alone. The devil is in that. Amen. He's in the tone arrangement. You can't understand what they're saying. It's just a bunch of underwater bubbling or something. I don't know what this new music is. But it's just tone patterns. They put tone patterns in there to activate your flesh. They call it activating certain chakras in your body. It's all spiritual. They don't care about word music. No, they don't care about. They, they don't have to put any time in it anymore. It used to take them a year to make an album. Now they put out a song every week because they don't care about that part. They hand the song to the engineer and he does his thing in it to put all that witchcraft in it. And then you turn it on and listen to it and wonder why your life is just, you have no power over anything. You know more song lyrics than scriptures. I'm preaching in here. Amen. For the flesh lusts is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These things are what? Contrary to one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that you would. So they're battling each other. So whichever one you sow to is the one that's going to be the strongest. No matter how tempted we are, we must believe that with the power of God, we can resist and get rid of the devil. Amen? But you can't get rid of the devil without resisting. So depending on what you was into before the temptation, that's going to denote how much strength you have to resist. Yeah. Yeah. So if you got sinners around you, all your friends unsaved, you won't have the power to resist. Why you save and all your friends unsaved? James 4 and 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will do what? Submit. Look at somebody and say, you got to submit first. And then you have to resist. So you have to submit to God and then you have to tell the devil, no, I'm not doing that. There's a hole in this message. I knew the hand claps was going to be like this. That's okay. Amen. Somebody got their stuff that they want to keep. I'm sorry, you know, this is me and me and this going to see Jesus together. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But you got to resist the devil and he will flee. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and help us live a holy life unto God. Who came? Jesus came. Jesus is the key. There is no holy life without Jesus. He came to do what? To do what? Destroy the works of the devil. See, it's not Jesus that's the problem, that's weak or whatever. It's your application of Christ. Are you applying Christ? Are you in Christ? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yeah. Old things are passed away. So as long as you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Yeah. And the works of the devil are destroyed. Yeah. Amen. That's times when you were so weak, you was about to blow it. And you were, just had enough strength to call on Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Did he answer you? He's never let you down if you call him. Now, if you don't call him, he's not going to be there. Amen. Even though it's not always easy, righteous living is a what? 
it's re, look at somebody say it's required. It's not optional. It's required. Amen. It's required. First John 3 and 8. He that com committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might do what? Destroy the works of the devil. So why would you surrender to the devil? By giving your life over to sin. Five benefits. So there are five benefits of living righteously as a believer. Other than going to heaven. <laughs> Somebody's looking like, oh. no, I'm talking about on earth. Benefits on earth. We're not talking about eternity. On earth, there are five benefits that I'm going to go over. Of course, there's, I'm sure there's countless more. But five benefits, five things that I want to stress on living right because you're going to have the opportunity everyone does you're getting the gospel you're getting the gospel message you're hearing the truth preach you're hearing it whatever you're going to be faced with the choice to choose what you're hearing and try to you know line your life up with the lord or to carry sin as a believer and be a lukewarm believer yeah you're going to be faced with that we all are Face with that. Uh, and, and they're all, all over, like, like I was talking about, just the, the preacher that was preaching what I just said and others, preachers, don't even believe what they preach. I've been in arenas with them, conversations with them, and they don't believe what they preach. Well, then why are you preaching? Why are you pastoring? The people want them. So y'all need to quit all this, oh, God is going to start, these preachers are going to drop dead. on No, they're not. Those preachers are there because the people want them. The Bible said that they would heap up on themselves teachers because they have itching ears. They don't want to hear the truth. So they're going to assemble under folks that won't preach it. Oh, they all just so deceived. They thought, no, they're not. People aren't deceived. No, they don't want the truth. The truth comes to all of us and presents itself. If you call yourself a Christian, you read the truth in the Bible. And when you read the truth, you had to decide whether or not you were going to follow it. Or am I going to find someone that will sugarcoat it so that it doesn't stop what I want to do? That's what people are doing. That's people's choice. I mean, I used to feel bad. Oh, Lord, help them. They following this, this dude and he just preaching lies and he just doing this. And God had to show me. No. They want that. They selected that. They chose that. It registered with them. They don't want truth. The Bible says they don't have a love for the truth. Yeah, come to church, but don't want truth. They don't want to read the Bible. They want the preacher to read it for them. You read the Bible, make us feel good about ourselves, and then we'll go home. Just don't preach about hell. Take that out. And they'll take it out. Yeah. Because all of us are going to have to stand before God and be judged. Amen. We're all going to have to be judged. And we can't say, well, see this preacher. He said. No. God's going to say, no, I spoke into your heart. And you turned me down. I showed you the truth. And you turned it down. I called your name at your lowest point and you ignored me. It's not going to be excuses. And you know, I mean, these false teachers are going to get theirs. They'll have their place. But you can't blame the people for that. The people want what they want. Can I keep preaching? 
Oh, this is a holiness message. Okay, let's go through these five things and then I'm going to let you go. First, living right maintains a clean line of communication between God and us. Y'all, this is the most important one to me. A clean line of communication where you can freely go before God knowing that you are good with him. Yeah. Because if you're not good with him, mm, prayer may not, mm, yeah, you hate somebody, you're not good with it. That's a sin. You haven't forgiven somebody, that's a sin. You gossiped on somebody, that's a sin. You lied on somebody. That's all of that's a sin. So you can't just go before God. Oh, oh, Riyashata. Oh, great one, great one, great one. <laughs> He's looking at you like, didn't you just wish somebody dead? So you don't have a clean, you don't have a clean line of communication. Now understand. Daniel was a very powerful man, one of the most powerful in the Bible. Didn't even, I, n nothing that he did wrong was listed in the Bible. We know he wasn't perfect, but it wasn't even listed. So he had a special place, and especially in the prophetic future. That's what he saw and all that. So he had a request. He was praying. And then the Bible said that the prince of Persia, which is a prince of a principality, actually was able to hinder one of his prayers and block it. Or hold it captive. And this is an upright man praying. So just imagine what happened to your prayers and you practicing sin. You know, principality have to even fool with you. Yeah. Huh, you're not above it. You ain't been saved so long that God is going to excuse it. You got to look at somebody and say, you have to live right. <laughs> Amen. Now, you may have come from a church where there was a different understanding. You may have. But we have to go by what the word says. And the word tells us that we have to be holy. So that means we have to try our best to be holy. Amen. Amen. All right, hand claps. Like the old folks, you say, Amen, lights. It's a tough boy, folks. This, this, this holiness messages, I'm telling you. I've had preachers tell me, Doc, you can't preach this right here, man, because everybody got to have a little song. It's hot. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Get around the wrong folk. I got around the wrong preachers because they was, you know, they was like, hey, man, you know, now you this and that. You, you know, you got to do this. You know, God understand. You know, look at David and look at it. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Big time preachers. Big ones. They just feel like when you get to that level, you know, it's about you. And I had to make a choice. I had to make a choice. I came to my wife and I did, remember that? And I made the choice. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be like that. I can't be like that. I just can't. It's tempting, but I can't. That's just not the lifestyle I'm going to live. I'm just not. Amen? Amen? Yeah. But it'll get on you. They'll they get you to do it. They, you know, they just, you get in the wrong arenas. And especially when, you know, my, my issue was I was always looking for a ministry father. So because my father had died, I'm looking for guys. They calling me son and you my son, all this, this, this. But then when they start doing the stuff, you know, I'm like, okay. This ain't in the, oh, no, see, man, this is it. Yeah. And I had to get away from them. Some of them mad to this day because I had to separate from them because I didn't want that no more. I, that, ain't, that ain't who I'm going to be. And I had to make that decision. I think y'all remember when I came in here on the sins of the father message. Y'all remember that message? And I told y'all who your pastor was going to be. Yeah, I told you. I'm not, that's, that's not it, but that's what people do. People, you know, they just try to find a back door in 
but then you lose your communication with the one that called you. Okay, so if he called me, and my life is a walking miracle anyway. Like, I don't think about it too hard because it don't really make Uh, hush my testimony. <laughs> you old foul spirit. But, but if your life is a walking, my life is a walking miracle anyway. So, you know, when I sit back and think of all that God has done, what he's doing, all that, I just get, it, it, I get frightful. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't finna be out here wilding in the name of the Lord. Amen. That just with that nobody that don't work for me. I can't sleep at night. Amen. I'm gonna try my best to live holy. Amen. Boy, these hand claps, you know, but that's okay. Folk don't like it. Folk, amen. Psalms 40 and 12. Did I finish that? Oh, we won't hide from God like Adam and Eve did. So Adam and Eve never hid from God until they sinned. All was good until they sinned. But living right keeps us from being what? Ashamed in his presence. Yeah. And that's the part I couldn't reconcile in my head, okay? So how do I go to God to get the message I'm supposed to be preaching if I'm out here wilding? Listen to what David said. For in innumerable evils have come past about me. This is when David wild out and was in all his stuff. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I am not able to what? Look up. Now, this had to bother a man that was after, once after God's own heart. Now he can't look up at his God. They are more than the hairs of my head. Man, what did you do? He said his sins are more than the hairs of his head. Therefore, my what? His heart faileth him. In other words, I'd rather be dead than to live in this sin in front of the God I love. Yeah, that's all he's saying here. My heart failing. Look at somebody say, you gotta live right. Number two, it keeps the devil out of the details of our lives. Oh boy, because when you get to wilding out, it starts changing the details. Oh, I'm not going to get a witness in here today, but I've given up on that already. The enemy doesn't affect our decisions or motives when we live uprightly before God. So you basically keep the devil out of everything when you live upright. But when you live downright dumb and dirty, the devil's in the details. What if I repent every night? Go ahead, repent every night. Is God going to forgive me? Yeah, he's going to forgive you, but look what you're doing to the details. <laughs> you're messing stuff up, bruh. Why would you preach the grace of God go cover whatever and you're not considering what whatever is doing? It's changing things. It's changing the details. Can I preach a hole in this message in here? Are the, are the elders with me? Y'all with me? Okay. Well, then, then I'm going to keep going. 1 Corinthians 5 and 6. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven does what? Just a little leaven. Little sin. It ain't nothing but pornography. Nobody see it. The Bible says that's adultery. It's equivalent. Oh, the hand clap. I don't hear no heavy hands. I should have some heavy, heavy man hands clapping on that. It's still adultery. You look it up on a woman and uh, work it out in your own mind and heart. You don't have to meet her. It's still adultery. Yeah, but 
nobody sees it. What about the people you're looking at? No concern for them? You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. That's all right. We're going to stop the class. I'm going to stop the claps again. I've done that before. All right. I'm going to jive claps. I'm preaching. I'm going to preach this holy mess. message. Hey, man. Well, I don't look at pornography, you know, now. Some of them have their butts out and just dancing. You know, it's regular stuff on IG. Bruh. It's still a sin. Amen. She was just doing the limbo, bruh. It's still sin. Yeah, and one's gonna lead to the other. You might be, you might start off watching the limbo. The high low can you go? And eventually you gonna go a little, a little too low. <laughs> yeah, it's the progression of it because the details. Brother, you're changing the details. And you know what else you're changing? You're changing your own tolerance. Yeah. See, it used to bother you when you first saw it. Oh, God, you so tall. Oh, oh, oh. Next time, oh, God. Oh, no. No, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> Next time, you just in the club. Oh, oh, God. Oh no, oh no. Bro, how'd you go from the phone to the club? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Duck man, see, I wish I had some real saints in here. Especially some real saints that done came through some stuff. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna be preaching stuff I had to come through. I ain't got no problem telling you. Amen. I've had to come through some stuff. <laughs> you got to keep the devil out of the details of our lives. The enemy doesn't affect our decisions or motives when we live uprightly. Before God. First Corinthians 5 and 6. Your glory is not good. Know ye that a little leaven. Leaven if the whole. One bad apple spoils the whole bunch. Yeah. So just a teeny tiny sin. Yeah. Can lead to something. Yeah. Amen. That's why you always tell the truth. Because it's easier to remember. Than a lie. Little bitty lie. One little bitty lie. Can turn into all kind of stuff. Yeah, and you, sometimes you didn't even know you just lie. You're so used to lying. He asked, is your hair real? Yeah, this is my hair. <laughs> now y'all at the altar about to get married. And you sitting there, who? Oh, tonight he about to find, he about to get a surprise that he's never going to forget. <laughs> Should I say something? <laughs> Do I need to say something? <laughs> you can't even hear the preacher. We are gathered here today. You said no. This is not going to be good. Should have told the truth. Wait a minute, preacher. I, there's something that has to be said before you pronounce us. <laughs> Now, can you read the love covers it all part again? Love a multitude. <laughs> we overcome age-old generational curses. This is the third benefit of living right. 
you overcome age-old generational curses. Amen. Sometimes your promiscuity didn't come from you. It came from an age-old generational curse. Sometimes your desire to smoke weed and dip snuff came from an old generational curse. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody did some Santeria. Somebody did some Yoruba. Somebody did something. Bloodline curses. You overcome sicknesses. Do you know sin will make you physically sick? Yes, it will. Yes, it will make you physically sick. You give, your, you give the devil license to do all kinds of stuff when he's in the details. Diseases, dysfunction, and family drama, all of this stuff. If you live right, you can avoid it. Amen. Family drama. Come on. Aren't you trying to avoid the drama that you grew up in? You don't want that. Somebody getting shot and fighting all the time. Everything. All of that. You took too much mashed potatoes. Girl, I'm going to come over there and just, I mean, fighting over everything. Mashed potatoes. Shooting. I told you not to wear my hat no more. Pow, pow, just uh, family. That's your family. Then when you meet somebody, they marry you, you crazy like that. Uh, first disagreement. Wendy's, I ain't going to no Wendy's. Pow, pow. Wait a minute here. How did you grow up? Good gracious. Okay, okay. Go somewhere else. <laughs> Roman, let me let me get to the end of this. It's just getting ridiculous. <laughs> but you overcome. <laughs> you overcome age-old curses, bloodline curses, sicknesses, diseases, dysfunction, and especially family drama by keeping. A holy lifestyle. Amen. Because if you get to drinking and drinking too much, now you're cussing out folks, mad at folks, you're moody, changing. See, it just changes everything. Romans 12 and 21. Be not overcome of evil, but do what? Overcome evil with good. Number four, it makes us examples. Makes us examples so that people can have hope in their struggles. So when you overcome, a powerful testimony can encourage those that are weak. We all in here, brother, come up to you. Hey, man, dude, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z. You say, hey, man, I used to struggle with Y. I ain't never done Z. I'm about to call the cops probably after this conversation. But you know, you just walk up to somebody in here, you're talking to them, and they, they may have gone through it. God may have led you to them. And they say, hey, man, I came out of that, dude. I used to struggle with that. Here's what I had to do. Here's what I did. Amen. Amen. First Timothy 4 and 12, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou a what? Example of the believers in word and in what? Conversation. Conversation. And in love, in spirit, in faith, and what? In keep yourselves pure. Amen. Five, it prevents dysfunction and drama from being an issue for us. Don't get in a situation where you bring dysfunction in. Then it becomes an issue. Our lives are shaped by our lifestyles. Did you know that? It's in the word lifestyle. Life. <laughs> your life is shaped by your lifestyle. You're not going to keep getting away with it because your life is being shaped by it. <sighs> Let me go on and finish. It's a tough 
room. <laughs> Living right keeps our lives right and our stress and worry levels what? It keeps our stress levels down, our stress and worry levels down. Amen. You know, living right will help your blood pressure. They don't want to hear this. Your sugar level. Yeah, your sugar level. You know, you eat, some of y'all eat candy because of the sin you hide. Sweets. Huh. Because it sends a message to your head to make you feel that things are okay. And they're not because you keep wilding. I will preach in here. I got it in the era, man. You can go look at the video. I've said it before. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll keep your stress and worry levels when you're not looking over your shoulder all the time. Wondering who's going to find out and who's this. And... No, 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 man. Just give it up. Amen. Look at somebody and say, live right. And look at somebody and say, it's too late. Come on, say it again. It's too late, it's too late. in the game, in the game. For, you to be for you to be wilding. It's 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 just too late. We at the end, bro. Galatians. <laughs> Did mother say wilding? Okay. Let's just make sure everybody said it. Our, li- <laughs> our lives. Shape my life. Now. Galatians 6 and 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap what? Corruption. Corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap what? Life everlasting. Summary. Praise God for the holiness message. You got it. Oh, yeah. You got it. You heard it. You can ignore it, but you heard it. Amen. Some preachers make righteous living optional by portraying the power of Christ's blood as permission to live any kind of way. And that is wrong. Can I say that? It's just wrong. You can't do that. So stop it. There are church folks that feel they can live double lives, act like and revel with the world, believing that God will be understanding. They surrender themselves over to sin that they once spiritually warred against. You used to fight against that. Now you're soft on it because you got used to it. And the devil started telling you, eh, gotta be all right with this. You do serve the Lord. You do work hard for the Lord. So you can have a little cake. Yeah. Spiritual cake, you know, pleasure. Somebody like, what's wrong with cake? I thought we was off that. I thought, I thought that was last month. <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> Let me be specific. <laughs> but they surrender over to the sin that they once used to fight. That used to be bad to you. You used to stop people from doing that. However, Some sermon church or carnal church leaders gave them license to keep their sin and God in the same body. They have bought into false teachings. Because sanctification is no longer being preached, we have hybrid believers that believe they can have a once saved, always saved ticket to heaven. These carnal Christians practice sin regularly with no repentance or sorrow. That's the difference. We all going to sin, but there needs to be repentance and sorrow. Amen? These folk, there's no repentance and there's no sorrow. Well, look at somebody and say, this is not right. This is not, that's not, that, well, that's not what ABC is going to be. So, amen. Go find one of those. We working on living right in here. That's the way it's going to be. We as believers must do our best. To live according to what? God's standards, not man's. We won't do everything right, but we must strive for holiness and never give in to sinful practices. Amen. Amen. 
You should clap even if you did. You should be clapping because you're coming out of it. That's what the word is for. You should have a I'm coming out of it clap. I don't care where you were last night. We as believers must do our best to live according to God's standard. We won't do everything right, but we must strive for holiness and never give in to sinful practices. We can't keep hiding sin and claiming eternal security. <laughs> this was the Baptist church. Nobody would have clapped. God is not judging the chair we sat in or the amount of services we attended. He's not judging the amount of money we gave or the hungry people we fed. God is judging the heart. To truly love him with our lives, we must reflect him with our behavior. I'm going to be found <laughs> trying to live holy. Amen. We must live right, people of God. When you fall, get back up because you're going to fall. Get back up, repent, and continue in the faith. Do not wallow in sinfulness. Do not stay there. Look at somebody and say, do not stay there. Call a friend to pray with or just talk to. Find a scripture, a sermon. Or a video that blessed you before and be encouraged by it. You must, look at somebody say, you must move forward. I'm going to say it again. You must move forward and prove to yourself and the devil that with God's power, you can overcome sin. Living right is not an option, it's a commandment. It's a commandment. Trust in God for your freedom. And then what? Walk it out. Hallelujah. Romans 6 and 19. Powerful scripture right here. Oh, this is going to put the, be the nail in the coffin like they say. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity unto iniquity. Even so now, look at somebody and say now. now. Even so now, right here Sunday morning, yield your members servants to righteousness unto what? Holiness. Holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Oh, but you wasted so much time doing the food. You just... <laughs> You messed up so much stuff. Some stuff still messed up. Just wow. He asked him, what fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? What did it profit you? Was it even worth it? That old man, them old sin, that old life, what do you have? What's the fruit of it? What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is what? Death. Death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. And the end, what? Everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Everyone stand to your feet. You know, every now and then, you know, you got to preach this message because stuff start creeping back up. Things that you had conquered and gotten past. Phone ring. Moving truck. Pull up. In front of your house. and Somebody done came back in the picture. Bank called and you had an opportunity to Kind of finagle a little extra by just not sharing the entire truth. Little things 
And that little leaven starts adding up. <laughs> and then next thing you know, the devil's in the details. He's got the wheel over time. So we got to make sure, come to the organ, BJ. I need the organ on this message. It's a holiness message. I need the holiness sounds, the sounds of holiness that only the organ can produce. That's I'm old school. That's, yeah, let's do that. But yeah, little thing, little by little. The enemy's plan is to take you down. So little by little, little things start coming. Things that you have victory over. Leaving the TV on a channel too long. Watching too much on social media. Then you call somebody you ain't talked to in ages. You on the phone, don't even know why you on the phone with them, but the devil does. He's just planning stuff. He's always trying to get you. So sometimes we need a maintenance message. Make sure, hey, you know, this is where the line is. The line has to stay here. I know I erased part of the line, but I'm going to draw it back today. Because I want to live right before God. I want him to be pleased with me when he comes. Amen? So if that's you, I want you to just come up and I'm going to pray for you. Whatever the enemy has tried to bring back, whatever he's tried to slip back, whatever he's tried to, you know, we all, hey, we human beings in here. He's going to get you where he knows he can get you because you're not, you're different from everybody else. So he knows you. So he's going to use a plan that works on you, whatever that is. And so we got to confess our sin to the Lord and we got to get it out. Amen. Come up, set these boundaries, man. Oh, these are my boundaries. Put these walls up. Fence, electrified fence. I need protection from this God. I'm not strong enough to handle this. God, I need you to cancel plans. I'm not strong enough to pick up the phone. Cancel it. You cancel it, Holy Ghost. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. When I am weak, you are strong. Your grace is sufficient for me. You can protect me when I can't protect myself. You're strong enough to stop the devil. You're strong enough to stop me when I'm not strong enough. So God, I put you in your rightful place. Come on, just bow your heads. Father God, I put you there. We put you in your rightful place now. In the areas where we're so weak and vulnerable no matter what happened to us god things terrible things may have happened in our childhood we may have been abandoned left alone we may have been violated in some kind of way. some kind of way the devil pulled a fast one on us on our family got stuff in us that we are trying to work out but we can't do it without your power god so i pray right now father god that your power will intervene into every life every believer that needs the strength to live holy father god to live holy and righteous to lay aside the sin that so easily besets us the thing that the devil keeps using keeps saying keep doing the person the place the thing whatever it is the song whatever it is the substance whatever it is father god we break every curse that will bring those things back to us. Father God, we break every curse that was performed, whether it's generational. Father God, whether it was someone we knew, whether it was someone that was in our lives, whether it's someone that's currently in our lives. Father God, we come against every curse of sin right now so that we won't walk in sin. We won't jeopardize our relationship with you. We won't jeopardize our families. We won't jeopardize our chances by continuing to pick up old habits, do old things, and not be good stewards of what you've given us. So Father, we repent before you right now. Take it away from us. Take it away, God. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Cleanse us, Lord. Give us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in us all, Father God. In Jesus' name. Take it away, God. Take it away. 
Take the thought of it, the feeling of it, the action of it, the desire for it. In the name of Jesus, we don't want to struggle with it anymore. But Father God, help us right now. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus. And every door that is open that the enemy has, Father God, we close right now. The doors that we don't even know about. The doors we don't even know about, Father, we close right now. Every stronghold of the enemy, every place where the enemy is hiding, Father God, we rebuke it right now and cast him out so that we can live this life the way we're supposed to. We want to live free from sin. We want to live a holy life. So no matter what the past looked like, no matter what we was into before, no matter where we came from, no matter what folks even remember about us, no matter what folks are even saying about us, Father, we know that if we're in you, we're a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things become new. And from this day forward, we can live a life that is pleasing unto you. We can live a life, a repentant life. Father God, where you are pleased with us and we can be holy even as you are holy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands up and just thank him. Thank him for forgiving your sins. Thank him for giving his life for this moment to be possible. Giving his life for us to be able to come here and get clean, get fixed, get washed, get remade, regenerated, reborn. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of repentance and forgiveness. Thank you for making it possible for our past sins to not be on our account. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we give you glory and honor. Come on, give him praise right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, hug somebody and tell them I'm going to live right. Come on, say it like I said it. I'm going to live right. I'm going to live right. From this day forward, I'm going to live right. Come on, I'm going to live right. Declare it. Let God hear you. And let the devil hear you. I'm going to live right. Because holiness is right. Holiness is right. And I'm going to live right. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to live right. Because holiness is right. Holiness is right. Holiness is right. Holiness is right. God's way is the only way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you got to mean what you're saying. Come on, look at somebody and say, I mean it. Look at somebody and say, I mean it. Holiness is right. And I'm going to live right. And I'm going to see Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.